What is going on you guys? This is All Danny Day 1 on the PS4 and I'm going to be giving you a build video for your AI or your Arpha Sys, whatever you want to call it, or her. So this is mainly a support build. It's not going to be a DPS build. It's just straight support, mainly because it's going to be kind of hard to have your Arpha Sys to be a DPS, but it's a, real, a lot easier to have them play support, you know, as a buff or um, a healer and whatnot. So first things first is you're going to want to go ahead and talk, talk to your Arvasis. So you're going to have to go home. So the way you go home, you just go to your map and then click on home. So you're going to go to your Arvasis, go to talk, and then go to Arvasis menu, Arf AI settings. And then you want to make sure you have everything set to healing and whatnot. So you have prioritized healing. And then you want to attack on battle start, not attack on site. And then you want to heal regularly. You want to be able to heal. You want your AI to heal as much as possible, basically. And then for the combat style, you want to prioritize reviving. So they're always going to be on top of the revive all, the whole time. So after you got all that set up, you're going to want these stats are the ones you're going to basically want to focus on the most. So you go to status. You're going to want to focus on vitality, intelligence, dexterity, and luck. You mainly want to focus on intelligence the most because this will increase or reduce the recharge cooldown for your abilities and your gadgets. And then vitality, dexterity, and luck, you just want those so that way you can unlock specific skills. Ag agility, you don't necessarily need it. Um, you, any of the skills that I'm using, or all eight skills that I'm using, don't use any agility, but I just use it, or I put points into it because they were cheap, and I mean, the extra defense helps. And the reason why you also want to have, at the very least, 40 strength is because you want to be able to dual wield for your AI, so that way they can still do some decent amount of damage and whatnot, but... If you are the type of person that doesn't want, isn't going to worry about the uh, the damage output from your your offices, then don't worry about strength too much. Um, I think at the very least you need about 10 to 15 strength if you're going to just use up to like rank 3 weapons. So vitality, intelligence, dexterity, and luck are the most important stats, Inte intelligence being the number one for this specific build. And then for your skills, the way you can do this a little easier, just go ahead and press triangle and go to roll, and then go to support. I just purchased all of my support abilities. So you're gonna get support, and you're gonna go to engineer as well. So I'm gonna go into the terminal, and I'll show you the skills that she's using. So I have it on my handgun and my rockets. So my handgun, I have healing bullet, HP recovery shot, curing field shot, and healing field shot. So obviously you want to have at least, I would say at least two healing abilities. So healing bullet and healing field shot would be the two best options. HP recovery is also really good because you get healing over time. The cooldown is 30 seconds. Well, plus or minus the um, intelligence doing a cooldown. So I'm not sure exactly what that would be. But um, yeah, I mean, you generally only really need about two healing abilities. And then the curing field shot, you mainly want this just so whenever you have status effects on you and your um, AI decides to shoot this, it'll be nice to go into it so that way you're not on fire, you're not poisoned. And then for my launcher, my rocket launcher or um, grenade launcher, I have a guard field shot so you get extra defense for all allies armor break shot so that way the enemy reduces their armor power field shot and this will give you and your team uh, a damage buff and then aed shot this is going to be the most important ability to have because with this your your um ai is going to be able to keep spamming the revive especially with high intelligence because i went down multiple times um, just farming regular mobs or a boss and then um, every time I went down it was like maybe every 30 seconds I got pretty much spawn killed 
my AI would be able to revive me just like that. So this AED shot is going to be super important to have. I'm not sure what the AED shot 2 does. It might, um, yeah, I don't know what it would, would do since I don't have it yet, since my proficiency is in at least 90%, but I'd imagine it'll let you revive maybe two players or three players, whatever. And then for the gear setup that I have for her, so, well, not necessarily the gear yet. So with gadgets, what I have for her on gadgets, I have first aid kit. You can either go with flashbang or electromagnetic stun trap. You want some type of CC effect and then anti-AR veil. So what this does is it just pops up a shield. And then I have the meta material camouflage. So meta material camouflage is going to be extremely important because this your AI is going to pretty much use this as much as possible. Anytime they have it, they're going to use it. And with high intelligence, it reduces the cooldown time or recharge time for this specific um, gadget. A lot of times that I've noticed is my AI would go invisible and then revive. But most of the time I see my AI going invisible pretty much the whole entire time. But uh, yeah, so you're definitely going to want to try to get your AI to get this. I mean, in general, you want any anyone to use this, yourself or your AI. But like I said, this is going to be a very important gadget to have. And then for the equipment setup, um, for the weapons, it doesn't really matter, um, I guess. I mean, I suppose it would in a way because there's a uh, memory chip that you can get that has debuff stacking. So debuff stacking would be useful to have because it'll let you stack, it'll let you do more, I guess, damage, I suppose. I'm not exactly sure what debuff stacking does entirely, but the way I kind of see it as is it either lets you do more damage while the debuff is active on them or you can apply multiple different debuffs on the enemy but regardless i think that's a good support ability or support uh, stat and then yeah so i don't really have any specific memory chips that you should go for but for the accessories um you want to kind of have things that can give you more defense physical defense um the optic defense and then the other thing that's going to be really good is the recharge time reduction, I guess. So recharge time negative 8.88% is going to be also really useful for any support classes that mainly focus on skills and gadgets. So try to, if you can get those, then I would highly recommend keeping it. Even if it's like a 5%, I would still keep it because it's better than nothing. And then I think that's pretty much it, to be honest. Um, I don't have anything else, but yeah, that's pretty much it with this specific build. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about this, let me know down in the comment section. If you have anything you want to add on, also let me know down in the comment section. If this helped, go ahead and leave a thumbs up and go ahead and hit that sub if you want to see more. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is all Danny Day 1 on the PS4. Have a good day, good night, and peace.